This meeting is being recorded. Yes, it is. <laughs> and welcome, everyone. Welcome back to the Stories That Inspire Us podcast. You know, you see me on here today with many guests. And let me just say, this is the first time for me interviewing four guests at one time. But I'm really excited. And I will tell you before I formally introduce all of my um, amazing guests, um, today's topic may be a little sensitive in nature to some people. Um, we are talking about divorce, high conflict um, issues, mediation, and we'll get into that in just a moment. You know, back when I first got married in 1985, at that time, the divorce rate was for every married person that was getting married, it was a 50% chance that a divorce would ultimately happen. Ironically, my cousin got married the day before I got married. I am that 50% that got divorced. Thankfully, mine was went very smoothly. But today's guests really are going to share divorce from a very different, different and very sensitive issues. Without further ado, I want to welcome to the Stories Podcast, first, Dr. Barb Hudson. Welcome. She is a leadership coach, family law mediator, educator, and author. <coughs> Next, I have Dr. Wayne Benison, whom I had the pleasure of meeting long before I met the other three. Um, so Dr. Wayne, I always um, treasured our different conversations when we did our little pre-podcast chats. Dr. Wayne is an author and an educator. Next, I want to kind of welcome together Chris Berry and Lisa Johnson. They are both certified high conflict divorce coaches and co-founders of Been There, Got Out. They are also newly authors of their book, Been There, Got Out. And um, I do want to recognize, thank you so much for holding up your book, Chris. I appreciate that. Um, Dr. Barb, or was it Dr. Wayne who had a copy of the book? Hold up your book. Thank they you had a book, book that just came out. Awesome. Thank you so much <laughs> for sharing that. Um, I do want to point out too, Lisa um, is also a certified domestic violence advocate. In fact, I am in the state of Connecticut. Lisa's live testimony, and I'm getting a little bit emotional about this. Lisa's live testimony helped to pass Jennifer's law in the state of Connecticut. As many Connecticut people will remember, this is in honor of Jennifer Magano and of course, Jennifer Fiber. I'm sorry, Jennifer Farber Dulos. Welcome to the Fab Four. I'm so excited to get the conversation going. Dr. Barb, would you like to start? Sure. Yeah. What would so, you like? Go ahead. So what I'm really interested in, you've all come collectively together. So I'd love to hear from each of you, your perspective on when you first met and how all of this came together. Oh, how we all first met. Um, let's see. So Dr. Wayne and I go way back. Um, we met years ago. I was a grad student and he was my mentor, advisor, committee chair um, for my doctoral work and my dissertation. Um, and so our book actually came out of my dissertation research. And Chris and Lisa, we met um, a few years ago. We were part of a kind of a marketing group um, online. And uh, we met in that and just kind of aligned with what we were doing. And we were all kind of finding our way, trying to figure out our businesses at that time. But we kept touch through all of that. And here we are today and we still collaborate a lot. It's been really um, a great experience. Yeah, we were friends before we were colleagues and collaborators. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yep. And that's you know, that's so important because I would imagine, and please correct me if I am wrong, when you're dealing with high conflict um, divorce situations, there's a lot of, no doubt, a lot of stress, a lot of emotion with that. So I think that it's really nice that you all had that friendship base before the Fab Four kind of began. Yes. yes. Lisa, I want to go to you. Um, Obviously, as I mentioned, I live in the state of Connecticut. 
very um, familiar with both of those cases. And I feel that the story behind your story is why obviously you do what you do. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and what it means for you to, you know, help these amazing women that are just in dire, very life-threatening situations? Okay, well, I should just correct. We help women and men, but we do have mostly female clients. Um, well, my own situation, I was married for almost 18 years. And when we decided to get the divorce, I thought, it would be fairly amicable and it was completely the opposite. It's been um, nine years and I'm still in the legal system. I actually have trial next week in Connecticut. And I kept thinking that my situation is just so bizarre. Like why is it this many years later, it's still ongoing. And so um, Chris and I, when we met, didn't realize that we had this, this thing in common with our difficult exes and not just getting through a divorce that took years. Mine took a year, Chris's took three years, but the post-separation abuse that occurs through the legal system when people are either dragged back to court because um, their ex is filing frivolous motions against them or because as in my situation, my ex didn't doesn't comply with our agreement and our court orders. And so that's why um, Chris and I got really focused in on something called legal abuse um, which is basically when people weaponize the system to continue engagement um, to still abuse their their ex. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, there's so many things that come up when when I hear you, you speak of what you've been through, and what and basically what a lot of um, your the people that you're advocating for go through that a lot of us don't understand. Um, having been a uh, paralegal for 30 years. Um, I witnessed some of that, but obviously not to the depth that both you and Chris um, have gone through. We, Chris, we work with we work with the worst, the worst cases. And most attorneys will probably get into this only deal with that about five to 10% of the time. Um, but I love your question about how we met. Um, we, Lisa and I met on match. <laughs> back in 2015 so you're a success story we are and I, at least it was the only date i went on in eight months or so on match or whatever it was um, but we started a romantic relationship before we even realized this common experience now the details are very different um, but we both had that same root cause to why our our divorces and the the post-divorce stuff was so difficult my divorce took three years and cost $300,000. And it was for no reason, we weren't fighting over millions of dollars or how, like there was no huge issue other than some details of custody, but it just, it, it was one of those nightmare cases. And um, we started, been there, got out when it, at one point we had already learned that we had shared this, this common thread to our shared challenges, legal challenges and life challenges. And I said to Lisa at one point, you know, if I could go back in time and just coach myself with everything we've learned. I could have saved half that money, half that time, and who knows how much emotional anguish and worry and fear about my role as a dad and all, all of that stuff. And we kind of looked at each other and said, you know, that's we sh we should help others in these situations. So, and then it, a lot of winding paths since then, but that's what started it all. And that's what's so inspiring me to me. What you just said there, Chris, that we should inspire others yeah I, I hope we're inspirational we're not therapists but um, we just talked with a, a client yesterday and this is not by far uh, not uncommon um, she came to us a few months ago a complete wreck she's a professional um, very educated all that graduate degree everything and she was she couldn't really do much more than string a couple sentences together. And she came to us yesterday on the verge of settling her uh, legal issues in uh, mediation, which doesn't always happen. And she's a totally different person. So um, yes, we gave her practical advice, but I hope we were also supportive. And I believe we were also supportive and helped her make that transformation. And that's really, I think, the key part because 
you know, with transformation, there's such an emotional um, setting for everyone who is involved. Now, Chris, you had mentioned three years. Lisa, you had mentioned one year. My divorce took three days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, uh, in fact, even the my attorney had said, this is the fastest divorce I've ever been through. But, you know... <laughs> all kind of kidding aside there, you know, I don't, people don't, I don't think realize how much that stress, how much that takes a toll, not only yourselves, but of course the children involved. That's gotta be just, you know, and thankfully my son was an adult at the time, so I didn't have that issue. Dr. Wayne, when you, when you are working with your different clients, how do you kind of coach them through those difficult things that kind of pop up, whether it's in mediation, whether it's an initial um, meeting with a prospective client? Yeah, my connection with Chris and Lisa came when Dr. Barb and I went on their podcast. We've been on several times. And Lisa's a master at asking questions. Mm -hmm. And it became apparent to me that there was two huge concerns with these high conflict divorces. One was getting through the system. It's a really Byzantine system and it's very expensive. And how can we navigate that more effectively? And the second issue is what about the kids? No one's paying attention to the kids because of all this animosity between the partners, the ex-partners. And that's where I've come in. I've taught for 50 years. And right now I have a mindfulness practice with kids and another mindfulness practice with adults. And basically these kids felt totally bewildered. It was my life. I haven't done anything to change it. And all of a sudden I'm dealing with really adverse stress or lack of attention. So what I've learned is that if you can normalize the relationship with the kids, they can breathe again. They're just always so anxious and so uptight for understandable reasons. The significant people in their life have abandoned them because they're so anxious. So I think we have to pay attention to the kids because they might present in what looks like an okay way but underneath, it's a churning cauldron. You know, and I'm thinking too, uh, Dr. Wayne, that, okay, the, the parents are going through a divorce, and but the children also go through the divorce. Mm -hmm. I have one um, kid that I do mindfulness uh, work with uh, on Zoom, mm -hmm. and um, his mom has worked with uh, Chris and Lisa, and he's full of all these really dark, dark images. So I play this game. It's like a word association game with him. And he loves it. He's a real bright kid. He's a third grader. Uh, really just quick-witted. And within one or two rounds of this game, he goes to a really dark place. And I let him. And I say, okay, now box yourself out. How can you get to the, a light place? Some days he does. Some days he doesn't. That's the work. Mm -hmm. Dr. Barb, when you're dealing with the, I believe the mediation aspect of it, right. and is it tough for couples, especially when they're in high conflict issues to say, okay, let's mediate this. Yes. And like Chris and Lisa, I tend to get the, I always call them the nuclear cases. <laughs> um, I get, you know, referrals from attorneys that just, they don't know what to do. I have a background as a therapist. I was in private practice for over 25 years working with kids and families. So I know kids, I know kids really, really well. And, um, you know, I always start my mediations telling the parents that I'm here for your children. And all that we talk about, we keep the kids front and center. And some parents, their level of conflict is so high 
Um, they just really struggle with trying to stay focused on the kids. They may say they're staying focused on the kids, but in reality, they're not dealing with things well. And so they're struggling parenting their kids. They don't know how to help their kids or sometimes even recognizing that their kids need some help. Um, so it's, it's kind of an interesting quandary. I've, for example, I've got a case now I've got two brand new parents. They have an eight month old and the mom is just trying to control everything. And I'm actually doing some parent coaching with the dad, teaching him how to be a parent. Cause this is a new thing. Last week we talked about brain development. We're going to talk about parenting styles today when I meet with him and, you know, he just needs some support. And the court system is just holding things tight. It's a, it's a black and white system and life is gray. So what I do is I try to help people through the gray stuff. Like this is everyday life. And once you get court orders, nobody comes home with you. I don't come home with you. The judge doesn't come home with you. So you need skills and your kids need skills as well. Um, and so that's, you know, kind of part of what we all do actually <laughs> as our fab four, right. we're, we're right. getting skills and guidance to people. You know, I think too, as far as children go, and you brought, brought up some amazing points. So thank you, Dr. Barb, for doing that. I don't think a lot of times when, especially if it's a high conflict or whatever situation it is, it's very emotional for the parent Again, it's emotional for the child. They are affected. What are some things that maybe parents, when they know that they are going to get a divorce, what are some different things that they can do to help their children? I could start. I think having a routine really, really helps. Something the kid can depend on. All of a sudden, the apple cart got upended and they don't know what is appropriate to say, what is appropriate to do. Everything is just a jumble. So for the kids that I deal with who come from high conflict situations and only a few of my caseload is uh, with divorce, a lot of it is with um, parents who it's more sins of neglect, more than sins of uh, conflict. They've just let the kids raise themselves especially if there's an older sib in the house. And I argue really strongly for having a routine. This is a time you can be with mom or dad doing a puzzle or just talking her through the latest screen game that you're doing. Just something that you can control the action. The kid can control the action. Mm. And I think too, with what we've heard in the news recently with everything going of course on in the world today, um, what have you, all of you, and I would love feedback from this question, what do you believe is the, the ill effects, for instance, of digital access? Go, Chris. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, I mean, um, it, this is a global problem, isn't it? With with kids uh, mm -hmm. everywhere being on devices and distracting and not connecting like like they used to. Um, you know, Lisa and I are not therapists. We're not child mental health experts. I, I think that this problem is a, a bit big from where our focus is. Um, but we can talk a, a little bit about, not specifically with children, but one of the big problems that, and we just interviewed someone this past week, is um, stalking and how stalking has taken a whole new level uh, digitally, cyber stalking, and often in high conflict cases, people will put air tags in the kid's backpack to stalk the other parent. Um, they can even get to them through gaming consoles. There's, there's all kinds of things where people feel like once they get out of the relationship, when they have children together, there's there's ways that, that an abuse, abusive person can continue to monitor their um, their ex's behavior. Um, this, this guy, Vance Long, that we just interviewed a few days ago was talking about how one of his clients inadvertently was, she didn't, she didn't know, even her neighbors didn't know, but she was being watched through the neighbor's doorbell, the ring camera and had no idea. So things are so, um, and, and technology is so fast that our society is really struggling to keep up with how to, 
how to deal with this. Personally with kids, I feel like it's awful how people, not just kids, but everybody has a phone on the table. It's become an addiction. Mm -hmm. People don't know how to look at each other. It's our brains are being rewired by being constantly interrupted and distracted. Nobody can focus on enjoying themselves in the moment because there's always things going on. Um, I recently read a book called The Power of Fun, which I love. And it talks a lot about how technology um, ruins our opportunity because we're, we're not engaged anymore. We're always being interrupted. And technology gives us what's called fake fun, the hits of dopamine through getting the hearts and the likes. And so we're always like getting interrupted with notifications and thinking, oh, I want to do this. But we don't actually feel good when we spend time um, online you know, except certain, certain things are really good, but a lot of it is, is harmful. So I'm gonna, that's my I'm two I'm gonna piggyback from that. Uh, everything that Chris and Lisa said is true. And I think it's about finding a way to balance the benefits of technology. I, I do mindfulness online on a Zoom platform. Uh, I couldn't do my work if it wasn't for the technology. But where I do agree with them, is that the kids today, I think humans today, are terribly distracted and they can't focus. They don't have attention. And attention is one of the three pillars of mindfulness. So I get a kid who his attention span is that of a gnat. I mean, it's in the fractions <laughs> of a second. And what I work with them on is, can you do a task for three, four, five, or six minutes? And they say, well, I'm online for all that. No, you're not. You're being, your attention is being diverted in milliseconds, milliseconds, milliseconds. So we'll do something, work with some clay and make something. Do coloring of a mandala. <laughs> These hyper sophisticated 11, 12, 13 year olds love it because they haven't had an opportunity, at least recently in their lives, to do something for a long period of time that's creative and safe. Yeah. And I think that's really important, Dr. Wayne. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Chris and Lisa and Dr. Barb, of course. What would you say is maybe something in common that your clients, there's like something that they, when they find you, when you, for instance, have your initial conversations with your clients, what is a common denominator? We know that it's high conflict resolution if, if they're contacting you, Chris and Lisa. Um, and, and Dr. Barb, as you mentioned, you typically get the uh, nuclear cases. Yeah. Um, so what would the common denominator be? Have you found that, wow, this is similar, this case is similar to this case? In our case, it's easy. It's it's that one of the parties, hopefully not the one that contacted us, that happens, but very rarely, um, has some kind of uh, mental condition. See, I, I like to be very careful and not say narcissist, not say borderline. Lisa and I are not uh, psychologists. We're not in position to diagnose anyone, but one of the parties has some issue uh, that is making them high conflict. And especially, and the relationship is ending or is about to end or ended quite a while ago. And so their mask comes off and they don't care about being nice anymore. It is, they want to destroy the other party. And that's the party we're working with. So that's, that's the common threat for sure. Wow. And right. Our our people are overwhelmed. They're really scared. Yes. They are confused because they don't understand why people are behaving the way they do. They don't understand why they're not getting justice quickly in the court system. And so what they, I think what is helpful, which we give to them, which I know all of us, the Fab Four do, is we, we validate their feelings. We calm them down. We let them know that there's hope. Um, but they need to do work and it takes time and patience and commitment and, um, and then nothing's easy, but there are resources here to help them. And it's a matter of getting that support because they need support and they need a team to support them. We often talk about different uh, legs on a table and how necessary it is to have the team get them and their children through a very difficult time. 
And one of the things that makes it so, so hard for them is naturally they should be grieving the end of a relationship, a very significant relationship, a marriage, sometimes a very long-term marriage. And while they're grieving, their former partner who 10 minutes ago they loved with all their heart or they at least were committed to is all of a sudden a monster bent on, on as I said, destroying them. And it just like, whoa, what happened? I, I, can I be upset about this for a little while? Can I have some compassion for them? Right. They have a lot of cognitive dissonance. Yep. Wow. And I think what that word that Chris just used is a common theme that Dr. Barb and I have experienced, and that's compassion. People are overwhelmed and they'll want to blame. It's the other person that's causing this overwhelmness. Regardless, though, they're hurting, they're suffering. The kids are really suffering, again, because no one's paying attention to them because there's not enough bandwidth from the significant adults in their life. And I find that a little compassion goes a long, long way. You don't have to problem solve. I care about you. This sucks. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And then let the conversation develop from there and talk about resilience, can talk about what are other options, but not until you've made a heart connection with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you say, would you say that? And I am no by any means any expert on this, but would you say that people who are the one that's having the, I'm just going to call it emotional issues, the one who is the, the really, I don't want to say the culprit, but the culprit, that those type of personalities thrive on that controversy? Is that a fair statement? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. And so I, you know, a lot of the emotions I see with parents is a lot of fear, just like Lisa mentioned too, like they don't lack, they, they lack confidence. Uh, they're very anxious. Um, you know, I get the question a lot of, do I need an attorney? Because they don't feel like they have the skills or the ability to get through this. They're so overwhelmed and they're scared. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen to them or their children. Um, so, you know, a lot of what I do as well is just helping them take tiny little steps and to see that they're taking tiny little steps forward. Because in all of this, it's there's so much that is happening, not even just the court stuff, but again, all the the you know, anxiety and the the other parent coming down on them and blaming and lying and all these other things that they're getting, and they're trying to sort through all of that and try to figure out what they're doing next. And, you know, why am I crying every night? And, 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 right? There's just, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. So helping them, you know, kind of see there are, there's there's a path forward and we're, we're guiding you through that path. And it's a bumpy one and it doesn't always feel great. And you may cry and scream and that's okay. That's part of it, but there is a path. And Barb just used that word overwhelmed again. And when I was a kid, they used to, on late night TV, they would show reruns of their uh, ground show marks. I mean, a long, long time ago, used to host a game show called You Bet Your Life. Yes. And if somebody, whoever the contestant was, if they said there was like a word, and if they said that word I came down, would come down and they'd win some money and it was all exciting. Overwhelmed is that word for us. We need a little duck to come down and give them some money because every time, it's like every day we hear that word. Yes. Yes. And throughout this conversation, the word overwhelm keeps mm -hmm. coming up and that's pretty significant. I just want to segue over momentarily to welcome all of our amazing live guests currently on the Wisdom Audio app. I see a lot of familiar names. So thank you so much all for being here today. I want to talk about each of your respective books. Now, before we got on to start recording, each of you held up your books. And we did that initially when we first got on. Um, Chris and Lisa, I want to start both, with both of you first. Can you hold up your books again, please? Been there, got out. When, yes. you, when you both sat down and decided to write this book, and obviously I'm, I'm a nerdy book person, everybody knows that, what was the feeling when you received the book in your hand, having worked on it 
obviously collaborated with it, probably read it a few times, and now you have the book in your hand. Our, our first thought was, oh crap, there were printing problems with the cover. <laughs> 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 you asked the question. That is true. So, so did it like, did you read it again? Like, how did it feel in your hands? Uh, I, you know, Lisa's been published before. This is her second book. She wrote another book years ago on a totally different topic. So I think for me, it was just, I, I it was, wow, this, this is real. And, and the way we got started I mentioned that moment when I, I said, if we could go back in time, I could change everything and save all this all this stuff. Um, our first idea of what to do was to write a book and have it be, there are a lot of, there are a lot of bio, autobiographical kind of books like My Story, Divorcing My Narcissist. We were more like, what can we say that would be helpful, practical advice? And that's that's how we built our coaching practice. But we didn't start thinking we wanted to be coaches. We started thinking we need to write a book. This this would be great. It would there would be an audience for it. And we, um, as we moved along with that project and sort of wrote some of it, we learned quite. A, I learned for the first time. Lisa learned about how the publishing industry had changed since mm -hmm. she published her first book. And we got um, uh, we got some really good advice that. Really, the book, unless you're Stephen King, you're not going to get rich writing a book, mm -hmm. right? So the book is really your calling card. It should support something else you're doing. And that's when we did a little pivot and and a lot of bumps and twists and turns along the way started the coaching practice, uh, which is what we focus on today. And then later on, a pu our publisher reached out to us through another one of her writers and said, you guys should write a book. And we're like, duh. That's that's where this started. So it was a long journey. It wasn't just the long journey of writing the book. It was starting the book, pausing the book, starting the business and all the twists and turns, and then finally writing the book, which was an incredible experience. And co-authoring it was probably very, very different than if either of us had written it on our own. Um, it, it was it, our relationship relationships survived that which is great <laughs> but it was really it was an amazing experience and holding the book was like this is real I can't believe this is real and congratulations and that you know the story behind the story is further cemented by the foundation of your book are you congratulating us for still being a couple or for doing the book <laughs> the answer is yes Yes. <laughs> you're cool. Both hands. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you're something, you know, having the coaching practice together, writing this book together, sharing your experiences in such a way where other couples, anybody reading that can really relate to your story and hopefully make some necessary changes or you know go forward with their life knowing that there is hope through that overwhelm there is hope thank you so much i can't wait to read your book by the way <laughs> thank you dr wayne dr barb um i'd love to hear a little bit more about your book claim your light claim your light is about how you make changes about habits or attitudes that are really pernicious and hard to get over. And um, long, long ago, um, when Dr. Barb was doing her dissertation, it's somewhat common for the student to want to continue with the work. They've invested so many years on the research, and they'll come to their um, uh, major professor and say, can we write an article for a scholarly journal? Which was really great from my perspective because I didn't have to do any work and I just signed <laughs> off on it. <laughs> it didn't happen like that. One thing led to another and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And for me, the genesis of the book started through all, all these numerous conversations Dr. Barb and I had about why is this so important? 
And we talk about three things that allow people to get over the hump, get over their I can't and get to an I can. And I published a bunch, but it's been academic journals. So I knew who my audience were. There were the other 32 people in the world who would read such an article. <laughs> so when we were worried about what we're going to be saying now, our publisher kept saying, expand your audience, expand your audience. And that was the journey that we took, our ups and downs, that we're doing a more general audience of people who, I, I think, along with overwhelm comes the word disappointment. They've been disappointed. They've been trying to do something, that hard thing for their whole lives. And the, the failures have outlived the successes. So one thing that we've learned to do is find the ways, and it came through Dr. Barr's research, to build resilience, to build a sense of confidence, to claim that which is innately yours. We call that claiming your light. Wow. That is so beautiful. I can't wait to read that book. Dr. Barr, <laughs> what, and for each of you, Dr. Barb and Dr. Wayne, um, what did it feel like holding that book in your hands? <laughs> it, well, it was very exciting. I mean, we, we live in different states and I actually got my books first. And so I sent you know, Dr. Wayne, a picture. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's here. You pull it out. And I, I equated it to, I don't know if anybody saw the movie Spirited with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell. <laughs> it's a musical that came out a couple months ago. And he has a song in there called that Christmas morning feeling. <laughs> and so I said, I got the, the YouTube of it. And I sent that to Dr. Wayne. I said, this is what you're going to feel like tomorrow when you open that box. <laughs> it's like that Christmas morning. And I feeling. did. And you did, did you, you were doing, doing the dance and everything, <laughs> singing the song. Yeah, it's very exciting. And again, my research was, um, it was years ago now, but my focus was to try to figure out in, in the mediation world, we say somebody is settled. And I kept thinking, what the heck does that even mean? Like, how are we measuring that? And so that's what I started digging into. And so we started our three keys, our grit, growth mindset, and empathy. And so we looked at can these three traits, these keys that we call them, lead to more durable agreements in people? And the cool thing was I did a, a lot of um, interviewing of other mediators and my top um, pieces of data came from um, mediators that were family therapists, not mediators who were attorneys. And my combined, I had three top um, family therapy mediators and two of them were my trainers as a mediator ages ago. And one of them has numerous, numerous books out on mediation and negotiation. And the three of them combined, I think, had, what, 96 years of experience together. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. And I thought, I think these guys know what they're doing. Like, I think I understand, I think they understand how to do this. And so that's what we did. We just kind of dug into that and, you know, with Dr. Wayne's guidance and then at the end, we thought, wow, this could be really helpful for other people. Same thing. Like, I think we can take this on the road <laughs> and actually work with people and help them through these concepts. And so we, our clients tend to be people that are stuck, but they feel like, okay, I can get out of this, but I just need some guidance. So Dr. Wayne, what's the word you like to use? What do we do with them? I have no idea. What do we do with them? We companion with them. Oh, we companion with them. I don't know. Of course and we, we conversate. <laughs> yeah. So the fab four, what, some things just popped into my head and I'll share that in just a moment, but what is the goal that the fab four has that maybe there's something in the works for all of you to share each of your individual expertise individually and as a group? Is there anything on the horizon? Let, let, let me jump into that and see what uh, Chris and Lisa say. Um, we're having conversations with Chris and Lisa before our first podcast as a Fab Four. And I didn't know who these people were. And immediately, <laughs> within seconds, it had felt like we had been old friends for 20 years or more. And there was sharing of vulnerabilities. There, there was no artifice, no ego. And what came out of that, and in fact, 
Dr. Barb and I were talking after uh, we hung up from this pre-meeting. It's like people need us. They need us to have the courage to deal with some really hard stuff in the criminal justice system, which is really a cruel system uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And aside from courage, a sense of hope that they can go on. And once people have that, they know what to do. They're smart, they can problem solve, but it's, we can pivot. And that's the word that came out of that first meeting we had. Wow. Kristen, Lisa. I, I mean, I, I think what we say to a lot of our prospective clients after we first meet them is we, we want to help them and especially their children get out of, of whatever the situation is, almost always involving legal family court and stuff like that. We want them to get through it as unscathed as possible. We want them to emerge from the other side intact. That is awesome. What I what popped into my head earlier was I see the four of you on some type of a TEDx stage, and it's a live virtual event that just goes. I'm j I had to put that out there in the universe because it just popped into my head. There's always a lot of popping going on, especially on a bad hair day. But I wanted to, <laughs> you know. It, it's the story behind the story. It's the resolve to help others to go that extra mile and really out of different types of stories. Each of you has your own story behind the story, but to really be in a place where you can help others. Yeah. My gosh, when I met with all of you for the pre-podcast interview, I was blown away and I'm just so grateful and thankful that the Fab Four were my first four guest appearance. Like I wouldn't have had it any other way. And I want to take this opportunity, you know, to share with everyone. Hopefully you're not in that situation, but if you can hear my voice, if you can hear my guest voice, and if you are going through a divorce and it you're having some high conflict issues, don't hesitate to reach out to either one of my guests. And of course, all of their com um, all of their contact information will be in the show, show notes. Before we sign off, I just want to go to each one of you. Um, what would you like to say to someone out there that can hear your voice that really needs to hear that strategy or maybe that you know, the, the overwhelming feeling that there is hope on the other side. Dr. Wayne, what is the message that you'd like to share with everyone? When I was uh, on the first podcast with Been There, Got Out, uh, I could see a running trail of people's comments in the chat room. And several people wrote the word, this is soothing. I really need soothing. Soothing can be yours. Hmm. Can be yours. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Barb. Well, I like the image of um, helping people put their super person cape on, whether it's you know their superwoman cape or their superman cape. And the message being that you can do this. You can do this. You just maybe need some guidance. You need a little support. You know, and that's what we're here for. But you can do this. You can get through these tough times. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Barb. Chris? I would say for, for anybody early who we use this little um, this slide of a, a light bulb, when that light bulb is first going on, if you're just realizing what's going on, just to know that there's an explanation for why there's all this chaos and conflict and confusion in your life. Like what happened? It can feel, I still remember feeling so alone. Like I'm the only, my set of circumstances is so unique that nobody else would understand or be able to help because friends and family don't understand. And they say, well, why don't, why doesn't your partner just do this or that? Or why didn't the judge just do this? It seems so obvious. It's not. And when they understand that, um, however they find out, when they have that light bulb moment, they understand this has a name. This is a lot of people have this problem, just like me. 
um, that can be, it's, it's horrible. I hate the fact that so many ha people have that problem, but it, it can be comforting knowing that you're not alone and there's support out there and there's strategies that you can put in place to get through it. Thank you, Chris. Lisa. Oh, well, I was going to say, Chris, Chris stole my line, but I can think of more. So um, the main thing is, yes, you're not the only one going through it because everyone we speak to feels like it's so absurd that it's just happening to them. And they're often very ashamed and are afraid to talk about it. And one of the perks we give our clients is we have this weekly legal abuse support group and we say everyone in it is dealing with the extreme case so you never have to explain yourself. People totally get it. And just by being in a space like that, people feel lighter because they feel validated. And sharing resources, it's like you immediately find friends because everyone's going through this tough time. The other thing is that people are often terrified because what the other side is doing makes no sense. Um, it's really scary and they're thinking, I, I, I can't deal with this, but we like to remind them that it, it, it makes no sense to you, but it makes a lot of sense to us because they're very predictable. There's a pattern that they follow. We know the pattern. We, experts we work with, like Dr. Bard and Dr. Wayne, they understand it too. So because we know that we, we know how to deal with it, we can teach you how to deal with it. We can't make it end anytime soon, but we can help get you through it and you're going to be okay. And look at us. We're still, you know, I'm still in the legal system, both feet in, but much further along. And we like to remind them that even though when they hear, oh my gosh, how could you have been doing this for nine years? I can't do. And we say, this is actually the happiest I've ever been in my life. So I have this amazing business. I have this amazing partner. We have this perfect career that I feel like I was made for. And so there's so many triumphs along the way that it's not that you would wish this on somebody, but there's there's opportunities that you don't realize yet. So it's going to be hard, but you're going to you're going to make in, incredible discoveries along the way. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you each and every one of you for taking the time today to share your stories behind the story. They are inspiring. And of course, we would not wish for anyone to go through something so traumatic, not only for themselves, but of course, for their children. I want to thank everyone who's watched today, um, actually listened today on the Wisdom Audio app. Thank you all so much for being here today. Remember, if you have a story to share, there's somebody who needs to hear your voice. Go from overwhelm to hope. There is a way. My name is Janice Mullalo, the host of Stories That Inspire Us today, truly inspired by the Fab Four. Thank you all so much, and we shall see you again very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>